Well, good morning and welcome to First New Hope Baptist Church where everybody is somebody in the sight of God. This is the day that the Lord has made and we shall be glad. Wow, it's so good to know that God loves us in spite of who we are. And on this wonderful day that we call Mother's Day, we wanna celebrate the mothers and the ladies in our lives today. We also are going to have a great day with a service as we celebrate communion of the Lord until he comes back again. And God has blessed us in a mighty way that we can worship him in spirit and in truth. So today, let's worship God. And as we get to God today and we start our worship off, I want to open our call to worship with a special word for the ladies today. From the book of Proverbs, the 31st, I'd like to read from the English Standard Version, 28 through 31, where the word of God says for the people of God, her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, as he prays her, many women have done excellently, but she surpasses them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her work praise her in the gates. May God bless the hearers and the doers of his holy word. We're going to have uh, our announcement come in a few minutes. Please have your pen and paper so you can record those and govern yourself accordingly as we prepare for a lot of great activities with First New Hope. We're also going to have a morning prayer by Deaconess Thompson, who's gonna come with a poem and a prayer. We also going to have a great day with the uh, Minister of Music as she comes with a couple of selections. And we will be blessed today with the word that's gonna come from the book of Exodus, the second chapter, the first through the fourth verse, where we'll be coming from the subject of mother's love. And so we're going to hear about who Moses' mother is. Do you know her name? We'll find out. But God bless you, may God keep you. And we love you with the love of Jesus in our heart, and there's nothing you can do about it. So as we come with our announcements, as we come with worship, as we come with song and prayer, as we come with the word, just enjoy God and let God just rule over your heart as we come to that time now that is you and God, between you and God only. In Jesus' name, we thank you for coming and spending a day with us. Amen. God said that this song is for you. You're at home, going through the struggle. You may be hurting, you may feel like you're going through troubles. You may feel like you are in a battle and you just can't seem to win. But remember that you serve a God that fights your battles. Keep yourself near the cross. Put your mind on him. He will keep you in perfect peace. He will bring you through the storm. Remember, we serve a God that is so good. Keep your mind on him. Jesus. Thank you. See, may your struggles keep you near the cross. And may your troubles show that you need God. And may your battles in the way they should. And may your bad days prove that God is good. And may your whole life prove that God is good.
is good. See, may your struggles keep you near the cross. And may your troubles show that you need God. And may your bad days in the way they should. And may your bad God is good. See, let your whole life God is good. May your struggles keep you near the cross. And may your troubles show that you need God. bad days prove that God is good. See, let your whole life prove that God is good. May your bad days prove that God is good. See, let your whole life prove that God is good. See, may your bad days prove that God is good. See, let your whole life prove that God is good. Okay, that was very bad. <laughs> morning, First New Hope, Pastor Reed, First Lady Reed, officers and members. Today is Mother's Day, and I'd like to wish all of you a happy Mother's Day. For just a minute, let's just go with some of the uh, women in the Bible that have influenced us as mothers. Let's start with Eve in Genesis. While she and Adam both brought sin and death into the world through partaking of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, she is the mother of the human race. Then there's Sarah in Genesis 17 through 19. She was a strong woman of the Bible and served as an example of the fact that God always keeps his promises. When God promised Abraham he would bear a son, Despite Sarah's inability to have children, she gave birth to Isaac at the age of 90 years old. Then there's Rebecca, who had the first set of twins in the Bible. Boys, Esau and Jacob. Read about her. There's Elizabeth in Luke 1, 41 through 42. Similar to Sarah, she too was too old to conceive, but God made it possible. She went on to give birth to John the Baptist, who told the world of the coming Savior, Jesus Christ. There's Mary in Luke 1 through 38. Mary's all-important role in the Bible goes without saying. She was the mother of Jesus. She gave birth to the world's savior when she was just a teenager. Though there are many more famous mothers described in the Bible, many of them are righteous, some of them not so much, but all were used by God to bring about his design. Take a few moments this week to explore the Bible to read about more of these notable women. Okay. Now I ask that you pray for me and pray with me as I pray this prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to be here to celebrate another Mother's Day. We praise you and we thank you for the gift of our mothers. You gave us life through them and through them we experience your love. Especially today, Lord, we pray and lift up all mothers and those who have the role of mothers, grandmothers, grandfathers, Mimi, Big Mama, 
all who practice self-sacrifice and show compassion to all who are in his care. We give you the thanks for the wide variety of mothers that is represented among us today. But most of all, O oh God, on this day as we honor mothers everywhere, may we love and cherish the special women who have borne us, who nurtured us, and who have prayed for us. May our hearts overflow with gratitude to you who formed and knitted us in our mother's womb. We give thanks to you, O oh God, who is a mother and father to us all, and in whose name we pray. Amen. Have a blessed day. the beginning of time With no point of reference You spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of life And as you speak A hundred different Oh, 
heart and everything you make. Every burning star, a signal fire of praise. The creation sings your praises so alive. So. Syllable empty your voice. For what you have spoken, all nature and science follow the sound of your voice. Voice, and as you speak, a hundred billion. Just catch your breath, evolving in pursuit of what you said. If it all reveals your nature, so will I. I can see your heart in everything you say. If the stars were made to worship, so will I. If the mountains bow in reverence, so will I. If the oceans roar in your greatness, so will I. For if everything exists to lift you high, so will I. If the wind goes where you send it, so will I. If the rocks cry out in silence, so will I. If the sun of all our praises still falls to shine, then we'll sing again a hundred billion times. You chased down my heart through all of my failure and pride. On a hill you created the light of the world, abandoned in darkness to die. And as you speak, a hundred billion failures disappear When you lost your life so I could find it If you left the grave behind you, so will I I can see your heart in everything you've done Every part designed in the work of our own love. If you gladly chose surrender, so will I. I can see your heart a billion different ways. Every precious one 
To God be the glory for the great things he's done, for the things he's doing and all he will do for you uh, on this wonderful time of the year in the spring of our lives. As the trees are blooming again, as the grass is growing, we also know that love is in the air. So we are looking at love today on the ones who are we call our mothers or our, our wives. And you know, it's a special time when somebody's been with you for 37 years and I want you to honor Lady Yvonne for 37 years of marriage to me. It's been very much a great ride and I thank God for her. We're going to come today from the book of Exodus. The second chapter, I'm gonna read the English Standard Version, the first through the fourth, and then we're going to pray and then we're going to get into the Word of God. Um, open your Bibles, your, your apps uh, uh, to, to that at this time. And if it's your custom to stand, you can stand. If it's your custom to be quiet, then you can be quiet. Or if it's your custom to sit, you can as well. But the word of God from the book of Exodus to the people of God says, Now a man from the house of Levi went and took as his wife a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him for three months. When she could hide him no longer, she took him in a basket made of bulrushes and dabbed it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds by the river bank. And her and his sister stood at a distance to know what would be done to him. That concludes the reading. This concludes the reading from the book of Exodus, the second chapter, where I just came over the first through the fourth verse. Bow with me for a word of prayer. Our Father and our God, we thank you right now for the opportunity to, to be your servant, to speak for you at this time. God bless my lips, my mind, my mouth. God bless these, your people, in a mighty way so that this word can be relevant for them and they can see that you're still real. God, we thank you. Holy Ghost, come in and, and, and move on the people. Soften the necks, the hearts, and the mind. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. Amen. And if I could use for a subject, a mother's love. This story is a familiar story because I know that you understand it's about Moses. But as I mentioned, today is something that we can all learn from as we can speak on who Moses' mother was and who was his father. The Bible declares that the greatest love is God's love for us. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. John 3.16. We all know that it's one of the familiar scriptures. But I also want to share with you today that the second greatest love has to be the love that a mother has for her child. So powerful. That love between the mother and a child is a indescribable bond that nobody can ever break. We know mothers would leave husbands for their children. We know mothers would give their last bread and go to bed hungry for their children. We know mothers that would, in fact, give their last fabric of clothes on their body to their children because they love them. I've seen this for myself. As I started looking at this sermon, it brought me back to some hard times in my life that, that my mother had to stop the pain from, from coming into my body. And I heard a preacher said in a sermon once, that a mother is like a cut man in a boxing match. No matter how many rounds you fight, she will stay in your corner with that child. And if I could be transparent today, I want to tell you that one of the greatest women I've ever been around is Yvonne Denise Reed. Ten years ago, I almost stopped loving my son for the things he put me through. But that little lady taught me how to love him again. She gave me the true meaning of the word tough love. 
and how you don't love somebody because everything is going well, but your true mark is when things are down and they're in the pits, do you still love them? When your name is being scandalized and, and people are talking about you, will you love them? Lady Yvonne had an attitude that I'll never forget. That was an attitude that this is my child, he came out of me, and it taught me during a crisis that she wasn't going to let go of the one that she loved. We all have some memories of how a mother gave up some things to make you get through some things. And it's obvious to me that God gave us the greatest gift in the world when he gave us mothers and wives. So today, I want you to know that when you read that scripture, it didn't even give the name of the mother or the father, but today is Mother's Day. And I want you to know that her name is Jacobed. Jacobed. Without Moses, we wouldn't have some activities. Without his mother, Moses wouldn't have done any of the things we know of. Without Jacobed, there would be no Moses. Without Jacobed, there would be no Red Sea experience. Without Jacobed, there would be no tablets that's written that would be given to any man that we know that were the Israelites. Without Jacobed, there would be no deliverer from Israel in Egypt. I believe we all know that Moses was supposed to die being a Jewish boy born in Egypt. But because of his mother, Jacobed, Moses would have been a memory if she didn't do what she did. Now, to appreciate chapter two, you must go back to chapter one, my brothers and sisters, and you got to read it for yourselves. The story of how the people left their land to come to Egypt because of the famine. And they, they came heading to Egypt because of the young man named Joseph. The one with the coat of many colors. You know, he was one of the 12 sons of Jacob. The one that they despised because he was his dad's favorite. The one that they tricked and they threw in a pit and they left him for dead. But when they figured out that they didn't want to do that, they sold him. And then they took the coat and told their dad, this is where the first big lie came in. That he was killed and here's the blood on it from the animal. But this is an example, my brothers and sisters, that although people throw you in a pit, God will raise you up and he'll raise up a standard and give you favor over your enemies. Even in the midst of likely circumstances like a pit, even in the midst of likely circumstances like being thrown in jail and prison, even in the midst of likely circumstances that Joseph, he was accused of raping a woman. It was Joseph that God's hand was on his life and he elevated him no matter where he was because he was his son and he was a dreamer. The Bible shows us that it was even in Egypt. This started was not the, the beginning and it would not be the end for this man. Though he was in a pit, he would go to become second in command of Egypt. But something happened in the text. Times have changed. Because his position that he brought in his family to survive the famine. You could see in the eighth verse of the first chapter. The Bible says that the king died that knew Joseph. He died the one that got along with the Israelites. This scripture describes that the new king had an aha moment. A younger version who looked out and seen that the Israelites were mighty, that they were intellectual. And, and he realized we need to do something to slow this down. So he bonded them into slavery. He made a decree that they would become slaves. And in chapter one, the 15 verse, he says he decreed that all baby boys would be killed. And the, the handmaidens were supposed to kill them, but that didn't happen. So he ended up saying that if you aren't going to do that, then we'll throw them into the river. 
So this is the time that this backdrop has happened that young men are being targeted in the text. It's the backdrop of this narrative of this, this, uh, this illustration of chapter 2 that we realize that there is a man who is a Levite. And he goes and we would say they're kissing cousins because she's in his family. She is the woman uh, that is in the tribe of Levite. And, and what's interesting is they don't give their name. But when you look into the Bible and you look at the text, you find that in Numbers 26 and 59, the word says, and the name of Amram, wife, was jo jo um, Joabak, um, Jochebed, excuse me, a, a descendant of, of Levite, uh, who was born to the Levites in Egypt, and uh, Aram she gave three children. It says Miriam, Aaron, and Moses. The question becomes, I'm birthing a child that should be killed immediately. What do I do? Her name means something in the text. It's not like our names today. Her name, Jacobed. It means Jehovah is my glory. That means everything that she did was a reflection of God. And she lived her life pleasing to God. In other words, she was a shining example of Proverbs 31 and 10. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. Look at what she does in the text to give God glory. Can I take a few minutes and give you some observation of the text of what a mother love will do? There's only a few things I'd like to show you. The first thing in the text it shows is in verse 2, she saw the beauty of her child. The woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him for three months. Look at how she speaks of the worth of in the goodness of Moses. She saw his future, not his presence of when he was a child. She seen that he was going to be somebody. She recognized that his greatness was not now, but his greatness would be later in life. She saw his value. Therefore, she wasn't going to let the world say what his future would not be. Mothers, if your child don't hear anybody else encourage them today, it needs to be you. I know that nobody else is going to lift up the child better than you because they came from you. So you're the one that needs to tell them that greatness will be in their life. It's better that you tell them than somebody else who is not going to treat them right. We should not be defined by what stuff we have or what relationship we have, but we should be defined by the love that a mother has for a child. A mother love is greater than any other gift. She is looking down and saying to her child, there is potential in you, Moses. She's looking down and looking at her child and she's saying greatness is what the God in me tells me is in you, son. See, she saw the beauty of her child. That's what verse 2 says. But next, they, they tell us something even greater. She shields him from the danger. That's what verse 2b says. Then she hides him for three months. Now, that's amazing. Moses was not a supernatural baby like Jesus. He was born to natural parents under natural conditions. That means he was a normal boy. But yet this baby remains hidden for three months. Now let's, let's, let's walk through that. He cried, but nobody heard him cry. His midnight moans of, of diaper rash, of needing to be changed, was not heard for three months. And I don't know how Jochebed could keep Moses 
for three months from nobody seeing the, the, the waist or the diapers or anything. But I know that she had her hand in God's hand and God was helping her at a time such as this. Isn't that like God? You don't always have to have a mountaintop experience or, or a Red Sea experience or the walls be coming, crushing in. Sometimes it's simple things that God can help make a way out of no way. Sometimes it's simple things that God keeps you from harm, hurt, or danger. And the question that we must ask ourselves when we have our feral moments in our life, these experiences of somebody lording over us, uh, who kept you? When you didn't know who kept you. The answer is. God is our God. And he doesn't sleep or slumber. But he's watching over us all the time. And, and even angels are around us. In our bedside. What the Bible says at night. You could have been killed. While going home. Driving. I've experienced this myself. You fall asleep at the wheel. But somehow. You make it to your driveway. And you make it in. And you wonder how you got to your front yard. It had to be the power of the Lord with his hands over your life. That's when you know that God shield you from danger. It's helped me somebody. In fact, his love is so strong that the psalmist wrote in Psalms 27 and 5. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me. Under the cover of his tent, he will lift me up high on a rock. You see, Jehoshaphat, she released her son in the very waters that was killing other Hebrew boys, Israelites. In the face of so many questions that she had to release him. So she could say, God, he's back in your hands. It's almost like a dedication. But the blessing was that before she released Moses, she prepared Moses for the best opportunity to survive. Look at what she did. Notice she made an ark for her child. Uh, the ark represents the saving power of God. Can I push it a little further? The basket was made of bulrushes and, and, and reeds. And that's primarily the, the weaving that they did with what's called cattail that we talk about. And, and she did that by laying on top of that a bitumen, which is a black mixture or tar or, or pitch, which is petroleum. So she, she made it waterproof. And when she did that, it would float. You see, she topped that off, my brothers and sisters, by telling her sister, you stay on the shore and watch what happens to my baby. So the sister stood at a distance looking for what was done, following her mother description. So not only do you see beauty in your children, but secondly, you should shield them from danger. But the third thing that the text does is in the third verse, she relied on God. That's a mother's love. Verse three says when she could hide him no longer, she took him and made a basket of bush rods, bush rushes, and dabbed it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reefs of the river banks. This woman relied on God, my brothers and sisters. In fact, the Bible says in Hebrews 11 and 23 that it was her faith at her heart that caused Jacobed to decide to keep her son. This is revealing a powerful application that we can apply to our lives today, the believers of the gospel. It is in fact that you cannot make it in this world unless you have something or somebody other than yourself that help you. Jacobed teaches us this lesson. So many of our questions today is, do you lay down your faith in a time of trouble? 
to rely and and it means that that you uh you 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 don't put your yourself there but you put all of yourself on the weight of the existing of your faith your belief and particular things that we see is it tells us that Jehoshaphat cast it all on the Lord not part but she said I'm going to release him to you God she knew that she was bringing a child into a mean world and before the child could even open his eyes it was hated because of the race it was i don't believe that that's anything new today my brothers and sisters because if we look at history in exodus chapter 1 it's compared to what we see today i believe we see very similar times isn't it interesting if you compare the two that the first form of racial profiling were the hebrew boys isn't it interesting that they were supposed to kill him before they were even able to walk isn't it interesting that the degree of the law that was given from the government said that there were certain boys that were to be targeted and not have a right to grow up to be men And isn't it interesting that even times like these nobody else's children was taken out like these Hebrew boys like they were just like we were. But it's interesting that the laws were unjust and unfair. But sentences were totally different. You see, we can compare those sentences that in a time that cocaine, crack cocaine received twice the times the sentences Then powder cocaine was used by somebody else. Notice it's funny how a new epidemic called epi- epioids would 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 cause them to say we need rehabilitation. But yet we didn't get any rehabilitation when we had crack cocaine. Because opioids is okay, but crack cocaine is not. But the good news my brothers and sisters is we don't rely on man. We rely on God. Because the Bible says in 1 Peter 5 and 7, cast all your anxiety or cast all your cares upon him for he cares for you. You see, she saw the beauty in her child. You should see the beauty in yours. She shielded him from danger that's what a mother love would do you don't want anybody to hurt your child but third she relied on god because sometimes when we get unruly as children only thing we can do is they can turn you back over to god and let god deal with your children see but the blessing here in the text before i come to a close today is jacobed faith is rewarded when her daughter comes and he comes and gets her and tell her oh Pharaoh's daughter wants somebody to nurse this baby you see not only does she comes and get her baby back but Pharaoh's daughter even pays her to nurse the child help me lord jesus how you can raise your own child when he's supposed to die it's only god see Pharaoh's daughter knows that this hebrew boy This child is not supposed to live but supposed to die. But when you are a baby and God can close your lips, but when he opens up the ark, she opens it up, the baby starts crying and it touches her heart. You see God can touch the heart of a hateful person and put love in it. God can make a hard-hearted person soft. He's able to make a stubborn person heart yield some love. He's able to take a heart of a proud man and make him humble. God is able to make a doubtful heart start to trust again. He's able to make a wayward heart make it do right things again. Is there anybody out here today who can testify that God changed the heart of your job? people on your job and made them be faithful and treated you right. Pe- 
people in your family who talked about you because you, you, you gave your life to God. God can soften their hearts. People who are associates and friends around you who talks about you by stabbing you in your back. God can have them smile in your face but then start to love you again. He will make even old death behave. See, I'll tell you today, my brothers and sisters, that there was another who came through 42 generation who suffered, bled, and died for our sake because he had a mother named Mary. But Mary gave birth to Jesus with the Holy Ghost. But we're talking today about a man named Moses who had a mother whose name was Jacobed, who thought enough about God that I will be his light in a dark place and I'll raise my child depending on the Lord. So as we come to a close today, when you look at your life, it's not where you start. But it's where you finish in God. And God can raise up a standard that the worst child can be the best child. He can raise up one that, that nobody wants to give education to. But they can be the brightest one in the end. Because he gives hope to the hopeless. And he gives love to the loveless. So on this day, honor your mother. Call their names. Jacobin. Call their names. Ernestine. Call their names, Yvonne. Call their names because they're worthy to be called. They're, they're, they're precious than ruby or gold. But call their name because God gave us perfect, beautiful flowers. And they're called mothers and ladies of the gospel. May God bless you. May God keep you and have a blessed day knowing that God is able. And as we come to a moment where you can give your life to Christ. You may be that son or daughter who's not saved. What better day to show your mother that you thank her for giving you life and watching over you when you were disobedient. This is a day that you can turn it all over to God. You can do it by just raising your hand and confessing that, Lord, I'm a sinner that needs to be saved. God, turn my life around so I can, I can be with you. Forgive me of my sins of omission and commission. God, forgive me and love me like, like the preacher was talking about mother's love here. There's no greater love than yours. So God, love me and keep me. If you said that, you're saved. All you have to do now is Give your life to Christ. You can call us and we can read scriptures. We will bring you in. We will love on you. We will teach you. But now you are saved. This is the most important part. Is you confessing with your mouth and believing in your heart that Jesus Christ did rise up on the third day for you. And he will come into your heart. So if you did that, you're saved. We now come to a point of the service where we celebrate Jesus Christ coming back again. I know many of you are used to sermons that may be stir moving in your heart or in your spirit. Sometimes you need to just hear and read for yourself. I'm going to go back to 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. And the word of God that says in the 23rd says, For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus Christ, the same night of which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks and break it, he said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do in remembrance of me. And then in the same manner he took the cup, which he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament of my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And after he, they did that, he warned them. He told them, whosoever shall eat of this bread and drink of this cup unworthy shall be unwilling, uh, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. Let her examine herself. So let them eat that bread and drink that cup. But you should not do it unworthy. 
and he mentioned to us that many are sick, many are died because they were not able to treat this with the honor it deserved. So at this time, let me bow for a word of prayer and we pray over the elements and then we will commune together. Our Father and our God, these elements are just example that we use to confess until you come back again, your precious body, which is holy, your precious blood, which seals us, God. We thank you right now for not us getting so excited that we forgot about who you are, because you are everything, God. Now, God, bless these, your people, as they partake of this Holy Communion. In Jesus' name, amen. He took the bread, and he broke it, he blessed it, and then he told them, let us eat together in the name of Jesus. And they did eat together. Let us come in together. In the same manner, he took the cup, a goblet of beef. And he told them, I will not drink it with you, but this is the, the blood of the New Testament, which is my blood. But I'll drink it with you in heaven. But well, he gave it to them and they drunk together. Let us commune together. And after they had drink, and after they had ate, they didn't have a benediction, but they went out singing, what a mighty God we serve. So this day, go out singing. I know it was the blood. And this is the day that you have Mother's Day and you have this Holy Communion. We want to thank you all for being here today. We hope, pray that the, the songs have blessed your heart, that the prayers have blessed your heart, that the word, learning who Moses' mother was, Jacobed. His father was uh, Amram, but Jacobed, this is her day. And we thank you for this being your days and you worshiping with us. Have a blessed day and a blessed week. Amen. Well, it's time for us to look at our stewardship. It's time for us to look at our hearts as God has blessed us to give back a portion of what he has already given to us. And here at First New Hope, we would ask that if you're visiting online and you don't have a local church, please give to our church. If you have a church of your own, we would ask you give to that church. You can give here at First New Hope by just going on Facebook and going to our account www.firstnewhopebaptist.com you'll be able to find our website you click the menu go to the give button and it will be easy it'll take you right through it where you'll be able to put in your amount take it to the cash register and it will pull out and you will get a receipt uh, that will allow you to see your donation that you gave to the church you're offering. If you want to mail it, you can as well. You can mail it to First New Hope Baptist Church, Post Office Box 356, Spotsylvania, Virginia, 22553. We will take it and we will record it and we will make sure that at the end of the year, if you've given over a certain amount, which we will, um, as our members know, we will give you a receipt so you can file that as well for your taxes. And so giving is part of God's plan. He says, give and it will be given to you. Press down, shaking together and running over. But you got to first give so then you can give in return. So it's the principle of God's word. But stewardship is what he expects from us. Be blessed and give. In Jesus' name, amen.